So today we are going to talk about ethics and technology and we are going to discuss how we can create and embed an ethics by design and a privacy by design within this um, approach to the development and the deployment of new technologies. But before we start, I really quickly wanted to say why are we talking about um, ethics and technology within the same sentence? You know, why are we talking about robots and at the same time ethics and morals and values? Um, and I think the answer is pretty straightforward, and it is because over the last few years we've seen some of the most amazing things that technology has done. So we've seen technology progress in a rocket speed in, in uh, medicine, for example, where we now can detect cancer and other diseases way before they manifest. And this is because of the possibilities offered by technologies, offered by robotics. In the field of radiology, um, algorithms have fed uh, millions and millions of medical images and therefore they learn what good looks like and they're able to spot the minimal change from, from uh, uh, optimum and therefore um, telling us immediately if there is something wrong in, in the image and spotting things that wouldn't even be visible to the human eye. So all this is important as it is the fact that we can use a lot of apps to keep in touch with our friends, to choose films that we like and, and um, take their no doubt that technology has made our life easier and has made our life even uh, more enjoyable on so many so many fronts but at the same time while all this has happened at the same time we've seen some pretty bad elements of technology some pretty bad misuses of data and i think it's fair to say that in 2020 people are waking up to the fact that technology is not neutral technology is and every technological artifact is the product of somebody who's designed it and is the product of the society where it is embedded and and a design choice is not a neutral choice but ultimately is a political one because people decide the systems the parameters how the product is going to look like who is going to use it and and uh, and so so on and so forth so it's it's a uh, i think there is a general awakening awakening about all this and this is why ultimately we are responding so dramatically as a society to to really the big issues around technology and 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 morality so for example i'm not just talking about facial recognition although it's become very obvious, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, that there is an inextricable link between um, between surveillance control and, and privacy. Um, and But also, um, I think a lot of people are realizing the, the pervasive impact on behavioral analytics by which we get targeted and served ads and recommendations based on our very personal elements around us, you know, and uh, and there is no, you know, this it's it's uh, it's quite um, common that people. I'm sure you've all heard it when they say Google knows you even better than your own partner and uh, and um, or, or parent, you know, and that is true. And this is because a lot of information about us has collected are collected every single point, or as we browse the internet, as we look at websites and 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 so on. So this is what we're talking about ethics and tech and and where I come in is because I want to tell you that you have a choice to make in this which is the choice that you can make is to first of all drive the conversation forward about all this because technology is the future and everybody's got to be involved in the debate around what technology is for and what debate and what we want from it you know in a world where rather than creating technology that has been adapting to us we seem over the last decades to have more to have been adapted to technology and we've been changing following the technology around us but ultimately what you have responsibility for is for creating if you're a data scientist or if you're an engineer for creating deploying developing buying procuring technologies which has ethics at its very heart and this is not an easy thing and certainly I could be talking for a long, long time about this, but and probably because I'm very passionate about technology serving us and technology for the common goods. But I'm going to focus on three main practical aspects and um, and teach you how to deal with the main three things around um, ethics and technology. The first one is called unintended consequences and consequence scanning. So the first thing is really um, that um, it's about scanning the consequences of the deployment of a particular piece of technology. So what I wanted to do is to think about a real example. And the real example is that you are um, restaurant owners, 
Pabonis or Cafeonis. And I'm coming to you and I'm saying that I've got this amazing piece of technology that you can deploy in your restaurant. And with this piece of technology, what you can do is you will be able to detect um, the, the, minim, the, the macro expressions of people's faces and the system will analyze them and tell you how happy your customers are uh, and in front of the, the dishes they are being served and also with the care that they receive from your waitresses and waitresses in, in, in the restaurant. So I'm coming to you and to say, yes, deploy this because by doing so, you will definitely improve the care of your customers and provide an excellent service to them. What do you say? Do you say, oh, yes, great, because by doing this, using this sentiment analytics, I can really improve my customer care? Or are you a little bit cautious about this? This is where I want you to think about unintended consequences. And I want you to scan them. And I want you to think about what's going to happen to me in the longer, to, to the communities in the longer term. So I'm going to ask you the following questions. What is going to happen to the environment in your own restaurant when people sit down thinking that they're enjoying a meal? But is the way that they inhabit your place going to change because of the deployment of this tech and the fact that people um, know that they are going to be watched? Second thing, what is going to happen to, the, to, to, to people's faces in the sense that some people have particular expressions in the face because they um they're disabled or because in their particular culture which is different from from yours they respond in a different way does that mean that they're going to be discriminated in the then what happens after the that, that particular that particular um uh, system has been has been profiling them um and the other thing is for example is things about privacy you know what about you know the privacy of the individuals so when they they are there and they there to enjoy some some relative anonymity when they're in 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 a particular space and there are many considerations like this that I but and also the, very importantly what is going to happen with to the relationship between you and your employees if they your employees which is basically to ultimately your greatest asset your employees know that you're going to watch. The reports coming from these machines and 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 then you're judging the performance based on on on, on an algorithm is that going to change the relationship with your employees so i'm asking these questions because from now on when you um deploy or when you decide to buy or to develop a particular piece of technology these are the sorts of questions that i would like you to ask yourselves what is the impact of these technologies on my workforce on my on the communities where i operate and in particular what is the impact on this technology on the most vulnerable in society um, and is this technology going to liberate me or is that tech liberate the, a lot of people is this technology going to code even more um, inequality um, and automated in 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 the way it operates so this is the consequent scanning element. So and that um, it, it basically in a nutshell, that could basically be translated as the fact that something is technologically possible doesn't mean that you have to do it. Think long term and scan the potential consequences. Element number two that I want you to think about is in relation to um, bias and and um, coding racism inequality into the systems. And this is really, really crucial. A lot of people say, well, yes, I mean, human beings are biased, so why shouldn't machine be biased? And I say, yes, that is absolutely true. Human beings are biased. Um, human beings are racist. There's a lot of them, sadly. But the problem is that when this racism, this bias, all this is coded into an algorithm, is coded into technology, that is gets escalated and it scales up and it gets automated into the systems in a way which is much more difficult to be kept accountable and is even much more subtle to detect. So it's really important that um, when you use a particular system, it's really important that you make some really strong choice about saying, I want to be fair 
in the way that I use this machine. And I'll give you a particular example. So let's say you, again, let's play this game where you are a social entrepreneur, you live in your area and you want to support people living in your area with loans in order to be able to continue with their activities. Um, it's, this is especially important at the time of COVID where we are trying to, to um, really uh, support and sustain our economic life. So you say, well, instead of, uh, you can say, oh, I'm so busy, instead of uh, going through every single application that I get in my community, I'm going to ask a software to make that decision on my behalf. I'm going to train, I'm going to purchase the system and which has been trained with lots and lots of data and this, this, this system is going to, 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 to let me know whether um, somebody is trustworthy enough and can receive a loan because I know the system knows that they are going to, to um, pay back. Again, I want you to stop for a moment and say, would you actually use a system like that? The reason why I'm asking is because I want you to pay attention to the words and the words I want you to pay attention to is trustworthiness. And again, who's defined who's trustworthy? According to what criteria? Is that the criteria that you earn a salary every month for, let's say, 10 years continuously? So if that's the case, what's going to happen to women that have taken two years off to have a child? Or in that case, what's going to happen to, for example, some of the most vulnerable in our community, therefore systemic racism, they tend to be the ones earning less or tend to be the ones that lose their jobs more, more frequently. Are they have to have less capacity to earn that money, to, to receive a loan because of how history has um, and created this systemic racism that we are really fighting to get rid of? Again, this is in really important considerations that you need to ask yourself. And what you need to ask yourself is, is am I doing the right thing? Not just in terms of um, my values, but is this technology going to support my values or not? If you want to help your community, therefore you want to build a sense of social cohesion, the question is, is that software, is that particular technological artifact that I'm going to use, is that artifact supporting my goals? And that's the, the second question. The third question that we need to ask, to, to really ask ourselves is in relation to um, purpose. And this is really, really important. It's probably the most important lesson of all. And that is that when you decide to use and to innovate using robotics, artificial intelligence and whatever it is, is I really want you to think about what am I doing? What purpose am I going to serve? Does it align to the values that I hold? And what is the purpose? What is the common good? What is the, the cause that I'm really going to use technology for? And by doing so, am I involving enough people around me to really to really understand what is the the, uh, the the purpose there out there that I'm trying to resolve? What is the what is the problem? Sorry, that I'm trying to resolve, and what is the purpose of of the technology that I'm I'm going to to deploy? So, and the reason why I'm talking about purpose and I'm ending on purpose is because the fact that something is available, the fact that some piece of technology are glamorous, that doesn't mean they, they're there to be deployed. Some people talk about techno chauvinism, which is the fact that in, in the, the technology, the technological tools, they seem to be immediately something that people have got to deploy, even if they don't really know what they're going to deploy for. 
So what I'm saying is if you're in for the long term, if you really want to make the difference, if you really want, if you're a data scientist and you really want to create products that improve people's life, or if you're an entrepreneur and you want to really grow your organization so that you can create jobs and wealth for yourself and for others, then technology has to be there to fulfill a particular purpose and that purpose has to be shared with this the employees with this, with the wider community and ultimately with those who are going to be affected the most by the technology that you deploy So three main things we've learned. Consequent scanning. The consequent scanning exercise is absolutely crucial and really must be deployed, must be uh, performed, not just in a closed room, but involving a lot of people around it. The second is data sets and um, the parameters that you choose for your systems. They have to really respect and mirror the values that you want to represent. And you have to be careful that you're not coding into the systems, you're not coding the same uh, structural inequalities, the same racism, the same chauvinism that we are trying so hard to get rid of. And this is because artificial intelligence systems, algorithms, if un unchecked, if unaccountable, uh, if unfettered, they can really scale up discrimination. And the third thing is really about purpose. Technology is great. Technology is fantastic. It can really improve our life. But the purpose of technology needs to be clear and it needs to be a total alignment between the technology that you're going to deploy and the values that you are standing up for. These three things, fairly easy to implement, but quite revolutionary to an extent. And I think if we bring all organisations together behind those three, this is a part that we can play as individuals and as organizations to make sure that this fourth industrial revolution brings benefit to everybody. Thank you.